and welcome to Trina Speaks. And in this video, I am so excited to introduce you to Miss Hinal Malde. She is a lead learning and development pharmacist and so has such a great insight into education and training within pharmacy. Not only that, she also has experience as a community pharmacist. And more than anything, she is one of my best friends. So I'm so excited for you to watch this interview between the two of us. And I do hope you like this video. If you do, why not give it a thumbs up? Share, like, subscribe. Do also visit my Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. For now, sit back, relax, and listen up. Hino, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Can I just say, I like that we both gone for blue jumper kind of vibes which was not planned not planned at all not planned i should also say in the interest of full disclosure i should say that me and you know each other very very well we have nearly a decade of friendship i was working this out the other day and um, we've been on multiple holidays together you were a bridesmaid at my wedding um and probably for just under two years now we haven't just been friends we've also been colleagues so it's safe to say we know each other very very well um, and I'd I say quite well yeah <laughs> just quite kind of yeah um, so but I want my viewers to get to know you as well so do you mind briefly introducing yourself sure um, so my name is Hino uh, as Serena said I've been in her life for quite a while so we met at university while I was studying pharmacy mm -hmm. and my, my background is community pharmacy, um, but along with Serena, I am a lead learning and development pharmacist at the MPA, and it's coming up to two years now that I've been in this role. Time has flown. It's gone so quickly. Um, so the first question that I'd like to ask all my guests is, why did you go into pharmacy? What was the idea behind wanting to do an MPharm degree? Where did that inspiration come from? Honestly, that's quite a hard question because it's not like I was, you know, I dreamed of being a pharmacist since I was five years old and I had pictures of pharmacists on my wall. Um, no, I think I just fell into it. It's really hard at 15 or 16 to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. Uh, you barely know what you're doing. Um, and I, I know, I knew that I really enjoyed chemistry. I loved chemistry. So that was a big factor for me. And I knew that being a pharmacist was a rewarding job. Mm. Um, and anything, any job where you can have an effect on people's lives, I think that's very noble. So part of me knew that. And I think it just, it all fit together and I just ended up in pharmacy. Yeah. I think a lot of people have similar stories with pharmacy. So. Yeah, it, it's quite interesting because with all the previous talks that I've done so far um, everyone sort of has a slightly different answer but also slightly similar answer as well which is quite interesting um, but you yeah, know I, I always just find it quite fascinating where sort of the inspiration was and I think it does tend to be those you know interests in chemistry and biology and sort of taking it from there you mentioned that you also your background was in community pharmacy what would you say was the most enjoyable part of being a community pharmacist? That's definitely just the patient aspect, without a doubt. Um, there's, there's something about when you get to know them and they start trusting you and you build that rapport with them. Yeah. You, you know you're not, you're not just contributing to their medicinal needs or their therapeutic needs mm -hmm. because that relationship that you build with them, it, it, it makes their whole journey better. You're contributing to their like compliance, their overall treatment. And I was, we were always told never see a patient as a prescription, as a walking every 10. And, you know, you don't want them to just mindlessly be taking medication just because they're in the NHS system and their GPs have told them to take their medicine so I always wanted my patients to have autonomy over their medicines and over their care as well yeah I thought that was really important that they understand what they're taking why they're taking it and that helps their treatment not just the medicines um so yeah I've always thought community pharmacists and just pharmacists generally they are definitely unsung heroes in that respect that, that was without a doubt my yeah the bit that I missed 
And I, and I know that you, you really did enjoy being a community and pharmacist as well. And then life took you on to being a learning and development pharmacist and now a lead learning and development pharmacist. So being in a similar role to you, I know this question isn't going to be the easiest to answer, but what would you say are your typical day-to-day -day responsibilities? And I say it's a difficult question because I know it can change from day to day, but sort of in a nutshell, what would you say are your key responsibilities in your role? Okay, so like you said, that is very difficult to answer because there are continuous new projects and tasks. Um, mm -hmm. It can be anything, but overall it would be we're looking at the pharmacy workforce we're developing the pharmacy workforce learning and development something that will always be there and you'll always need to invest in it as well as businesses will need to invest in learning and development so we make sure that there are courses for pharmacy staff pharmacy support staff for pharmacists or pharmacy students and we're continually improving those courses making them better and um looking for gaps as well and seeing how else we can support pharmacists yeah i think that's a it's a good way to explain it yeah no exactly and and it and would you say that you've always had an interest in sort of going into that educational side of pharmacy um honestly i i i well i didn't like i said i didn't really know i was going into pharmacy yeah. so, um i've i've thought about teaching on and off throughout my life um it's just nice to share knowledge and especially sharing passion for a profession i think and pharmacy is one of those professions that let's be honest it does get a bit neglected it doesn't always have um great light to it so um it's nice to be able to share that passion for pharmacy with other people yeah. um, but this role i kind of fell into it yeah. so um but that's the nice thing about pharmacy. There's so many roles that you don't know about and you, exactly. you do fall into. It's, it's exactly that. You, I think, especially like from my experiences, I thought, you know, I would sort of go into community pharmacy and then maybe end up doing that role for the rest of life, maybe a bit of teaching on the side. But it's just funny how opportunities present themselves and you then decide to go in a different direction to what you thought you were going to go into. And that's kind of the idea behind each of these interviews to, to showcase that actually there is so much that you can do with your MPharm degree. There is so much that you can do being a pharmacist um, and other roles and opportunities out there. So with a role like yours, what skill set would you do you think someone would need for a role like yours? Uh, well, um, again, like I said, there's so many different things. Um, but if we go over the main things that we do do, so uh, there's a lot to do with um, writing content, improving content, updating content or courses. So it'd be good if you had writing skills as a basic. Um, good writing skills. Um, presentation skills are also useful as you do face to face study days. Obviously, now we're doing a lot of study days over Zoom, but presentation skills are still <laughs> yeah, exactly. Present, presentation skills are still important. Um, you've got to be quite tech savvy as well. So, again, um, Zoom, um, whatever you use online and we have learning learner management systems so they're basically the courses online yeah. and a, a, a lot of a lot of businesses and just the world is um, move, moving towards online mm -hmm. so um i think so that's a really, really, I think that's a really yeah. good point actually that that whole technology side which not maybe we like especially with our role but also with with any kind of role like you said you kind of need that that tech know-how now because that's just how the world is adapting and, and growing and it is very much becoming about sort of the IT technical side of being able to do all these different things. What advice do you have for anyone who would want to go into say education and training, learning and development? What key piece of advice do you have for them? Um, I'd say you have to be quite adaptable. Uh, I've mentioned that you get thrown into different projects and tasks. Um, so you, one thing that would help would be just getting a lot of experience under your belt, which in pharmacy is quite easy to do, especially if you're in community and you locum or if you're in hospital and you do a bank. So it's, it's good to just 
explore and be out of your comfort zone like the more you are out of your comfort zone the more you'll learn and that's you'll meet so many people and pharmacy is such a small world Uh, we say this all the time yeah Uh, but but it really is and that that i think is a a big thing and i'd also say with pharmacy don't put all of your eggs in one basket so you I like you said you thought you'd probably be in community and you you Mm. didn't know what would happen and you've ended up here and I think everyone's kind of says the same thing if there are if different things come to you just take them Mm. and there's a quote that I really like and it goes something like sometimes not getting what you want is a wonderful stroke of luck I've not heard that one I like that that's, yeah, I think so. Yeah, exactly. yeah so it's um, that's pharmacy. You you know you you think you want something. I I wanted to go down hospital and I've ended up here. So mm. with me, yeah. <laughs> what more could you want? <laughs> exactly. But you never know what way things are going to turn out, and no no one's got it all figured out. We don't know where we'll be in five years time, ten years time. It's good to plan. It's good to have ambition i think the only other thing i would also add and i guess this is actually for any role is to be proactive i think it's such a key skill and attribute to have um not relying on other people to hold your hand or spoon feed you and especially i think when you're doing something new by all means you need that support to help you through those new experiences and new challenges 100 percent. but i think i think being proactive, being able to sort out the resources yourself, being able to find and research whatever it is that you need to do, and then coming up to whoever else it needs to be and saying, actually, I don't really know how to do this. Can you yeah. support me on this, this and that element? I think that's a much better way of going around anything. And I think that skill of being proactive can really take you through any role, whether that be in pharmacy or out of pharmacy. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And yeah, if you do want to go into education, uh, learning and development, it's if you, it's a good idea that if you already are in like hospital or community pharmacy, or if you're even if you're a student at university, see if you can do some mentoring or tutoring, or if you're in community or hospital, see if there are colleagues that are doing level two or level three courses. See if you can help. Just take an interest and understand what there is out there, and so true. that will help with your experience definitely. Yeah. Because it is exactly that. You might not realise, but actually your pharmacy technician might be doing a particular course or your dispenser or medicine counter assistant, whoever it may be. And actually being involved in their work and seeing what it is that they do just gives you that that bit more of an insight. And I like what you said about being adaptable as well and, and being flexible. And again, I think that goes sort of with, with any role, which is quite fast paced um, because yeah, they will train right. itself with new challenges and you do have to be malleable in that in that sense. Um, no, so thank you for that. Um, we spoke quite a bit about your career. The other thing that I really want to talk to you about is the other big passion in your life, which is mindfulness, meditation, so much so that you have your Instagram account called The Peace Junkie. It is a brilliant Instagram account. And I think what I particularly love about your videos is that they are so universal. And that I think no matter at what stage you are in your life, you can really relate to the concepts that you talk about. Um, and I think especially in this time of Corona, where everything is all a little bit chaotic and, you know, or our minds, I think more so than I'd say beforehand, a lot more people are getting into meditation and mindfulness um, because of this cl- current climate that, that we find ourselves in. I know some of the topics that you've covered are, for example, um, on negativity, um, dealing with overthinking, unexpected, um, uh, unrealistic expectations. But what I want to know is how, where, where does the inspiration come behind those concepts and ideas that you have? How is it that you think, right, yep, yeah, I'm going to make a video on this today? Okay, so is this something that I've been interested in for a while? I started meditating quite a young age. And I read a lot of books, meditation books, tried different types of meditation, a lot of philosophy, um, different types of philosophy, like Chinese philosophy, Taoist, Buddhist, um, Hindu philosophy. And I liked talking about this stuff and I liked in-depth conversations about this. So 
Instagram just gave me the platform to do that. I didn't really have any other intentions but to just talk about the stuff. And it's funny that you said uh, that you you can find yourself relating to it. And I think pretty much everyone on the planet more or less goes through the same thing. We all have similar issues. We're all going through a time where socially things have changed so much. So I think that's why we can all relate. We all have, you know, two things, two wolves on our shoulders. Um, I think that I just, I like to talk about this and discuss more with more people. And it makes me realize that everyone is kind of going through the same thing. We're yeah. more similar than we think and we're more connected, I guess, than... Yeah, exactly. And we all think, uh, we, we like to compare ourselves to other people. And we always like to think that person's doing better than me or that person's doing that. And this is true to even pharmacy, you know, as you, as you have friends going into other jobs, especially after you've uh, graduated, you compare yourself and you think, oh, this person's gone this, this far, or they're doing this now. But we're all on our own paths and we're all going to get to our own destinations. And it is actually that destination that matters. It's not, it's not the end goal. Yeah. Um, and I think more and more people are realizing that more and more people, especially recently in the last couple of months, are realizing that, you know, they are important and they need to spend time with themselves and understand themselves. And I just like being a part of that. I like seeing people l loving themselves and having that self-esteem and well, learning fun. more about themselves. Yeah. I mean, you can see your passion through your videos when you're when you're talking and you have this way of talking where it feels like it's just me and you on like FaceTime or something. I feel like you're talking yes. to me and, and I'm sure like other people who are watching that feel the same way as well. I'm like talking to myself. No. <laughs> <laughs> we are the same person. <laughs> but also like the little quotes that you have on there as well. Again, it, it, it just makes you, there is one that you've put on there and it's, it's, it's a picture that I've seen on, um, like other places as well, but it's of a tortoise and the tortoise is lying on its back, but the, but the, the image is flipped. So it looks like the tortoise in the sky. And so the tortoise is saying, oh, I'm flying. And, and the whole representation of the image is about perspective. And perspective is something that I'm very passionate about because I think if you can change your perspective on something, it really helps with dealing with any challenges you face. And I think that image in a nutshell best represents it because they're the tortoises in one perspective thinking, yeah, I'm flying, that's amazing. When actually, there's the poor tortoise, he's upside down. Um, but he's, I think it's such a great representation. Yeah, images like that. And that's why I love quotes so much because images and quotes can simplify things. And we, we as humans have this magnificent thing in our heads called a brain but it li loves to overcomplicate everything. And that's our downfall. That is actually our downfall as humans. We overthink, we overcomplicate, we make mountains out of molehills. And so that's why I really like little quotes like that. It just kind of grounds you, makes you humble. And I think especially like, if we're thinking about pharmacy as well, and, and, and I guess with any role really, no matter what role that you're doing, it can be very hard to then switch off and to stop your brain from overthinking, to stop your brain from thinking, okay, and I used to do this a lot when I was at community, when, when I was done for the day, trying to then switch off on my journey for when I go home. You, you, I'm not sure you've done it as well, where you're sleeping at night and then suddenly at 11 p.m. you think, oh my, I didn't order Mrs. M's medication or yep. I didn't put the order through. I didn't do this and do that. And, and your brain... You write a note down on your phone, yep. yeah. Yeah, your brain is just constantly ticking. And, and again, with... And I don't want to talk about Corona too much just because I was just so sick of talking about it, but it does add on that extra layer I think of anxiety and, and overthinking and that's why I think now more than ever mindfulness and meditation it is so much more prevalent in people's lives and I think something like your Instagram account it's, it will speak it speaks volumes to so many people out there um, and for anyone who is interested in knowing more about Henel's account because it is just amazing I'll put the link in the description box below 
But Hino, thank you so much for being here today, um, for joining me, Anytime. your words of wisdom, your perspectives, your thoughts and insights that you've shared with us today. Um, do look after yourself. Take care. Thank you so much. Thank you. So grateful to be here.